As someone who's worked in the data science field for some time, I think it's important for me to talk about some of the challenges that I personally had when getting started. While I'm happy with where I am now, I have faced and I continue to face many obstacles during my own learning journey. In this video, I highlight the struggles that I had on my very first real data science project. One of the reasons that I'm so adamant that projects are important for your learning and for your career growth is because I personally wish that I'd started doing them earlier. My first true project came after I started grad school and I was required to do one for an intro to machine learning course. In this course, we learned many of the basic machine learning algorithms for classification, regression, and clustering. We were also expected to apply this knowledge to a problem of our own choosing. Let's go back to when I first got the assignment. I'm excited about the project because I have essentially a full month to tackle a problem that's very interesting to me. A month, it seems like a long time, right? The first problem that I faced was that I just couldn't for the life of me pick a topic. I thought that I wanted to do something related to sports data, but I just couldn't decide on what data set to use. I love golf and I love football data, but at the time I couldn't find the right problem or the right data set. I swear I switched project ideas about, I think, five different times in the first two weeks. For a lot of different data sets, I kept starting the analysis, getting stuck, and then eventually switching my project because I didn't know how to take the analysis a step further. My problem was that I kept jumping into analysis without defining a question that I wanted to answer. I'd get lost and overwhelmed without having a target or a specific problem that I was focusing on. Looking at this now, for every new project that I start, I have a destination in mind. This helps me to find other avenues to get to the end goal, even if I get stuck at one part of this process. Previously, when I got stuck, it felt like I was at a dead end and that I had no clue what direction my destination was. With the goal in mind, I can see the end goal and I can at least know where to look for the next step in my process. At this point in my life, I got really into watching MMA. A few of my friends started betting on it and I wondered if I could make a model that would make my bets or their bets profitable. This got me thinking about a real problem. By some stroke of luck, there was also an MMA data set on Kaggle that was of pretty good quality. I decided that I wanted to make a model that would score the outcomes of fights based on what happened in each round. I really started to dive into this data, but I was kind of at a complete loss with what to do when someone got knocked out or submitted. There is no scoring associated with these things. The match just ends and it's pretty obvious who the winner is. Also, how could I predict these things with the current data that I had? I was stuck again and at this point, I was completely running out of time. This time, unlike the previous ones where I could pivot, I had no choice but to stick with my current data. Around the same time, I watched two MMA fights and I think one boxing match that had some pretty controversial decision wins. This means that the fight went all the rounds and the winner was decided by a panel of judges. I was completely infuriated and in my disgust, an idea came to me. Could a model do a better job at scoring decisions than human judges? I had the data for each round. Why not focus only on the matches that went to decision and ignore the other ones that ended in TKO, KO or by submission? Back then, I kind of lucked into this new problem statement that I had. But in my work today, I'm constantly trying to refine the problem that I'm working towards. The more clear an outcome is that I want, the easier it is for me to get the data and build the model for that use case. Something I also learned by chance here is that it's important to wrestle with your problems and not give up too early. I'm certain that many of the other project ideas that I had, uh, they could have been promising if I just maybe spent 10% more time on finding a solution or refining the problem. I finally had something concrete to work on. I started cleaning the data, building the models, and predicting the outcomes. Honestly, for this specific project, the process wasn't all that difficult. In some of my future problems, I had a ton of issues with the pipelines though. After I cleaned my data, did my feature engineering, and trained my models, I was getting just abysmal results, just so bad. At best, my model was able to predict the winner of a decision at around 55% of the time. This was barely better than a coin flip. How could it be that the performance of these models was so bad? I threw the kitchen sink at the problem, everything that I knew at the time, all the different classification techniques, ensemble models, uh, re-engineering features, principal component analysis, different scaling techniques, etc. And my models barely got any better. Was this result something that I could be proud of in presenting to my class and to my teacher? I pulled an all-nighter the day before just tweaking the model with just still bad, bad results. In this case, I was forced to stop working on it because of a time constraint. 
I was so disappointed in myself that I, I couldn't get a better solution to this problem. You know, was I just not a good data scientist at the time? Was, was I deficient in something here? Looking back, knowing when to give up or looking at a problem in a different way is something that you can learn. I know this goes a bit contra to the previous point, but as we gain more experience with projects, we gain intuition around when we should push through obstacles and when we should stop. I find a good rule of thumb is that when we are collecting data, cleaning it, and analyzing it, we often don't go far enough. On the other hand, when we're tuning our models, I personally find that I usually go a bit too far down a rabbit hole. This can be a bit different depending on the project you're doing, if you're competing in a Kaggle competition, or if you're doing something for work. At this point, I had no choice but to write up and present my unsatisfactory results. Going back through my analysis though, I realized something that stopped me just dead in my tracks. What I was trying to predict was who the judges said won, not if a fighter should have won or not. There was no source of truth, no broader review of the fights outside of what the judges had said. This was a bad and a good thing. The bad part is that it doesn't allow me to build a model that does a better job than the current judges because I was training the model based on those very judges' decisions. On the other hand, the fact that this model performed so poorly despite my, my greatest efforts suggests that there could be a huge amount of variance in how the fights were judged and the consensus around who won. If the model had a very high accuracy, that could suggest that the judges were very consistent in what measures they evaluated the fight on. Since this model was so bad, it could potentially suggest the opposite. Obviously, this required further research, but it was a significantly more interesting observation than just my model's poor performance. Again, looking back, this was a really silly mistake to make. The data that I was using was wrong for what I was trying to initially create. On the other hand, I did still learn something very interesting about the UFC fighting domain. In this case, a very strict model building project transformed more into a learning and observation project. This was a really good outcome in, in my personal opinion. There are, are really two takeaways here. First, constantly reevaluate your data, especially your dependent variable. Second, keep your mind open to why your models are performing well or poorly. There are some awesome additional insights hidden in there somewhere, and uh, although you might look foolish, it can turn out to be a really valuable insight that you make. At this point, I was really proud of how far I came. I definitely had my struggles, but I was through the worst of it, and I just had to share the code and make a video on the topic. I thought that this would be a breeze. I threw it all together pretty quickly, and I shipped it over to the professor. When I eventually got my grade back, all of the points that I lost were related to the presentation portion. My code was incomprehensible to anyone but myself, my video presentation was twice the length of what it was supposed to be, and I didn't convey my results very clearly. The part that I took for granted ended up being what really bit me in the end. In retrospect, the coolest analysis isn't worth much if no one can understand it. If someone else needs to use your code, if they can't work with it, it's useless to them. Even though it can seem trivial, the way that your projects are communicated are what makes or breaks them. If you're looking to learn more about projects in general, I have a full project playlist linked in the description and in the top right corner. Clearly, my first project was a struggle. I went through the whole range of, of different emotions when creating it. It was filled with a lot of failure, but eventually some success. Looking back, this was one of the most valuable experiences that I've had in this field to date. I learned something cool about project planning, problem definition, model building, and even documentation and sharing your work. Most of the things that I picked up aren't easy to learn in a more traditional classroom setting either. I also failed quite a lot, but in my opinion, it was certainly worth it. My advice to you is to start your first project if you haven't done one yet. If you've already done one, do another. You won't regret it. Better yet, share the project you're working on or one you'd like to work on in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.